Good morning. You are welcome to chemistry class. I'm Olumide Ogunlade. Today we'll be looking at the rates of chemical reactions. And in an attempt to buttress this, we'll be looking at the following learning objectives. That is, meaning of chemical reaction, meaning of rate of reaction, factors affecting rate of chemical reaction, exothermic reaction, and finally, endothermic reaction. We all know that reactions basically are physical or chemical. Physical reactions are temporary and they are reversible. But chemical reactions are permanent. They are irreversible. In our elementary class, we were taught that AB plus CD will give us AD plus CB. You can see the flow. A coming to D to form AD and B coming to C to form CB. We'll be looking at more of such. Example of such is sodium hydroxide reacting with HCl, I mean hydrochloric acid, to give us sodium chloride and water. So, we need to look at some keywords in today's class, such as exothermic reaction and endothermic reaction, even the word rate of reaction. What is rate? Rate is basically speed of a reaction. And how do we, how do we calculate speed in mathematics? Speed is basically distance over time. But for this chemistry class, we will look at it as speed or rate of our reaction to be the volume of the product over time taken. Or we say the volume of the reactant used up over time taken. Anyone, either volume of product or volume of reactants used up or taken, used up over time taken. Thank you. So, that is rate. And what is exothermic reaction? Exo and thermic. Exo meaning external, something going out. So we say, and thermic is from the word thermal energy, that is heat energy. So we say exothermic reaction is a reaction in which heat is lost or released to the environment. The reverse happens in endothermic. Can we look at endo? Endo means internal, meaning coming inside. So we say endothermic reaction is a reaction in which heat or energy is absorbed from the surrounding into this reaction system. We'll be looking at a demonstration or an illustration to buttress this. To buttress to buttress the teaching on exothermic and endothermic reaction, I've decided to demonstrate how exothermic reaction could be seen or uh, just common reactions in our daily chemistry, in our daily life that exhibit exothermic reaction. This is our common and liver salt or sodium bicarbonate. It contains sodium bicarbonate, citric acid and so on. So I will pour it inside this. But what we have here is a glass cup with water inside is water from this bottle. We have water here, so I poured it here. So I will just, and I really want us to observe what happens. Can you see, can you see that? Can you see that kind of reaction? And immediately, it's advisable that the patient should drink it immediately because of the energy that is involved. You get it? Mm. You may need to have a taste of it in your home. <laughs> okay, now this is an example of the way chemical reaction takes place. Imagine if it was acid that I poured inside this or sodium hydroxide. Don't try to drink that. If it was acid or sodium hydroxide that I poured inside this, you will, ex you will realize a change in the temperature of the container. There will be a warmth. Yes. One of these days in our subsequent classes, we will take you to the laboratory and you will see how this happens very well. The graph of the reaction rate is usually drawn like this. Energy against time. The energy which could be in calories if it is energy from food or joules 
if it is just like what I just exhibited, we measure this one in joules, okay, or any other kind of reaction. So that will be joule, I'll have my joule here, over time in seconds. And some, we know the way we calculate or interpret graph mathematically, so it's as easy as that. We will look at the factors affecting rates of reaction. The following are the factors. We have temperature, concentration, pressure, nature of reactants, surface area exposed, presence of catalyst, and presence of light. In an attempt to explain temperature as a factor that affects rate of reaction, I, we need to remind ourselves what we talk about, what we call collision theory. According to kinetic theory, it says there is collision when particles collide together, particles of a substance when they collide together, and this happens usually when there is increase in temperature. However, these collisions is not all of these collisions that actually bring about a new substance or a chemical reaction. Instead, there's just a fraction, and that fraction of collision is called effective collision. So collision theory states that for a chemical reaction to occur, there must be an effective collision. Based on that theory, if there's an increase in temperature, there will be increase in effective collision, and there will be increase in the rate of the reaction. The same thing applies to concentration as we have in liquids and pressure when we have gases or gaseous substances. So increase in all of this will always lead to increase in the rate of reaction. However, we will look at some of these things in our subsequent classes as it affects chemical equilibrium. Now, nature of reactants. Basically, we have some metals or some substances that react faster than others. For instance, sodium is so reactive that we don't permit it to be kept just like that. We usually keep it under paraffin oil because it could react with oxygen or air. In the same vein, when we look at the electrochemical series, we will realize that the metals that are higher in the electrochemical series are highly reactive. So any of these substances reacting with, this, with an acid or another substance will increase the rate of reaction. However, the ones that are below will have a slower rate in the reaction. Surface area exposed. Imagine I want to burn this cloth. The time it will take for me to burn this cloth or for me to break this is going to be different from the time it will take if I had shredded this cloth first of all. And this happens when we are having wood burnt or the sawdust burnt. The same material but different surface area exposed. Sometimes when you look at your past question, you see questions like what time will it take or what will it be the rate of reaction when marble chips or marble powder or marble granite are being reacted, are reacting with so so amount of acid. The, the best way to choose the answer is to look at the one that is in powdery form. It is the one that is in powdery form that has larger surface area. Hence, large surface area will increase the rate of reaction. Let's look at the, pressure, the presence of catalyst. We all know that catalyst is a substance that alters the rate of a reaction. It does not take part in a reaction. Instead, it speeds up the rate of the reaction. And how does it do that? It reduces the activation energy of the reaction. I will need to pause for a while so that you, I will show you the diagram of energy profile and how catalyst has effects on this. Okay. So if we have the reaction starting from this point, from these 20 joules, and it goes up and came down. Mm. Now, this is our A plus B producing C plus D. Now, from this place where it started to the peak, yeah, we call it AE. So we will call it EA, but I prefer to call it AE. And what is our A? That is activation energy. Okay? But this peak is called activation complex. The basic thing that happens when you 
this is okay when we look at this from 20 to 10 and the way to calculate is we say our data h equals to hp minus hr our hp that is the product which is c and d is 10. we have 10 minus our ab where we started the reactant that's 20. hence we have minus 10. anytime we have minus 10 it means it is an exothermic reaction anytime we have minus value it could be minus 10 minus 50 minus anything it is exothermic reaction but when we have a positive value it means it is endothermic reaction so what happens to this activation energy when i introduce a catalyst for instance it means that i don't need to have as much activation energy as i needed in the first place what is this activation energy it is the minimum energy required for a chemical reaction to take place is the minimum energy required by a, by a chemical system for it to undergo a chemical reaction so when you introduce a catalyst it reduces the energy or amount of energy needed for it to occur so that's why it will reduce it didn't go it didn't get to this peak it reduces and comes down here this is the effect of catalyst in the reaction so if you want to draw your energy profile you say the difference here this is our delta h which we have here then we have our reactant here and we have our products here my exercise my challenge for you is can you draw an endothermic reaction and forward it to me thank you Hence, catalyst has effect on a chemical reaction by reducing the activation energy required. Lastly, we will look at presence of light. It is not all reactions that have been affected by light. We have few of such and they are called photochemical reactions. Example of such is photosynthesis. We all know that in an attempt to prove that starch is produced in a green leaf, we test it with iodine solution after being heated with alcohol or ethanol. Some years ago, I had a practical session with my biology students, and I realized that we didn't get the results on time because we started the, we started the practical very early, and as at that time, the starch had not been produced. We started before the sun came out. Guess what? The student that came late, were those who got the answer right. Should we not justify coming late to class? No! But we realized, we learned a thing. And what do we learn? We learned that starch will not be produced without the presence of light from the sun. Hence, photosynthesis is a very good example of photochemical reaction. This is where we'll be drawing the curtain. But before we go, we would like to have a recap of what we've learned today. Going back to the meaning of chemical reaction, saying that a chemical reaction produces permanent results. It's permanent, it is irreversible. Let's look at the meaning of rate of reaction. That is, it is basically speed or volume of product over time. And our graph could be, depending, it could go this way, it could come down, depending on the state or the condition of the reaction. Then we looked at exothermic reaction, meaning of exothermic, that is exot a reaction that loses heat to the environment, external. Then endothermic reaction is the one that absorbs heat to the reaction system. It takes it from the surrounding. We looked at factors affecting rate of reaction. So I give it a mnemonic, TCPNSPP. Let's go again, TCPNSPP. TCP and SPP. So it will help you to remember the factors that affect the rate of reaction. And we looked at the energy profile for exothermic reaction. And I'm challenging you. Draw the energy profile for endothermic reaction and forward it to me. You could send it to me on my WhatsApp page or you send it to me in my email. Mounted Olugentu at gmail.com you will have it on the board now. 
this is where we'll be drawing the curtain for today. I hope it was exciting. Feel free to send me your feedback and comments. Thank you.